Now, I want to be clear. When I talk about the comparison between Warren Buffett and Jim Cramer, I think both of these guys really have good intentions when they're talking about how to get people to make more money in the stock market, when they're giving advice, but their styles are different. So in this video, I want to walk through their different styles, you know, who has been more successful financially and whose style that I would most like to emulate. So let's get into it. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, hit the like button on this. If you like it, no pressure. And if you subscribe to this channel, I'm gonna be having uh, some more stock videos. I'm gonna be putting out stocks that I think that I wanna own, some stocks that I wouldn't wanna own, covering why I wouldn't wanna own them. So if any of that interests you, subscribe to this channel so you can get notifications of new videos coming out. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Hey everyone, Paul Clark here. And in this video, I wanna compare Jim Cramer to Warren Buffett. Now, these are two individuals that I have listened to a lot in my lifetime, and I think that both have a lot to offer the financial community, but at the same time, their styles are very different. And you know, with that in mind, I kind of wanted to say, okay, let's step back and say, which style has been more successful financially, right? Like, what are their comparisons? You know, because Warren Buffett kind of has the more old school mentality. He says, hey, I want to invest in a business for the long run. You know, I'm going to be looking at this, my ideal holding period is going to be forever, whereas Jim Cramer is going to be buying a stock saying, hey, I'm going to buy because the earnings release might be positive next week, or I'm going to buy because, you know, this president might get elected and that's going to change my investing thesis. So he's more short-term oriented, right? And he's going to kind of buy and sell around those things. Meanwhile, you're going to have Warren Buffett just kind of sipping on his Coke and holding his Coca-Cola stock and not sweating earnings season in the same way that Jim Cramer is going to sweat it. And so, okay, so at the end of the day, which style has been more profitable, right? Who's the person who's out there trying to time the market or the person who, again, is sitting back saying, hey, buy something you like, hold it for the long term. Like, how are they doing? Well, let's take a look. First of all, Warren Buffett is 90 years old, okay? You look at Jim Cramer, he's 65 years old. And when you compare their net worth, uh, Warren Buffett is worth $78.9 billion. Dollars. I mean, that's a huge, huge number, of course, and I'll have a couple uh, lines here to put that in perspective a little bit. Um, but then when you look at Jim Cramer, his net worth is a hundred million dollars, and you, I mean, you can't, you can't downplay, you know, a hundred million dollars. It's that's huge. Obviously, that's huge. Um, you know, and then you also, when you look at their net worth, you might kind of compare and say, okay, well, there's a 25 year age difference. So what if Jim Cramer for the next 25 years? you know, was able to continue investing, you know, would he rival Warren Buffett's wealth at that point when he is 90? Well, okay, so when you start to look at it, well, what if he was able to grow his wealth by 9%, even looking at it from like an after-tax, or not after-tax, after-inflation uh, perspective, let's say his after-inflation growth rate is compounded at 9%, on an annual basis for the next 25 years, well, his $100 million net worth today would then translate into about $800 million in 25 years. Now, again, that would be strong growth if he would be able to achieve that, but that still wouldn't even put him at billionaire status. And once again, I'm not downplaying $100 million, I'm not downplaying $800 million, I'm nowhere near either of those amounts, and I would be thrilled with either of those amounts. But again, I think that when you certainly say that, hey, these two individuals have such different styles, and you know, I think a lot of people might be more inclined to follow a Kramer because you know he's a little flashier and he's kind of you know, he's got a show where he's he's talking about some of these things on a more frequent basis. But I think if you were just going to say, hey, I want to listen to the person who's been more successful, I feel like it's not even close. I feel like you should be more inclined to listen to Buffett. And I also think, by the way, if you actually listen to more to Buffett, that you'd be able to sleep a little easier at night. Because when you take the longer term perspective, again, you're not going to be you know, trying to sweat about, you know, oh, what's going to happen with the presidential election? What's going to happen with, you know, this trade deal? You're, you're not going to... Um, sweating those things or stressing out about those things, you know, quite as much when you lengthen your time horizon. Because when you lengthen your time horizon, one of the things you realize is that, you know, businesses, especially American businesses, you know, over the last, you know, several decades, centuries, I mean, they've, they've done well over the long term. And that's something that Buffett's always really big on saying, hey, why bet against America? Hey, that would have been a losing proposition throughout history. Why start now? We think about 
uh, Warren Buffett. You know, he of course is actually the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, and Berkshire Hathaway, they have uh, you know their share, their main shares are actually worth over three hundred thousand dollars a share. Um, it's actually if we look at it, uh, about three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a share. Uh, and that's crazy. I mean, you got to think Apple, you know, had their split earlier to kind of make their shares more affordable. Clearly, Warren Buffett has not been a big fan of having a stock split. And by the way, when you ask your, ask yourself maybe, well, why hasn't he had a stock split? I mean, $315,000, that's an insane price for a stock. I can't afford to buy that stock. And that's actually part of his point. He wants to have investors that are, you know, rich enough to, uh, or maybe have sound mind enough to have been with them for a long part of the journey where they're not gonna be you know, sweating earnings releases and things like that. So I think when you actually have a share price that's as high as Berkshire Hathaway, it actually kind of attracts a higher quality share base and not kind of your top 100 Robinhood traders. But when we look at that too, so Berkshire Hathaway stock being worth $315,000 per share, if Jim Cramer wanted to take his entire net worth and purchase as many Berkshire Hathaway shares as what he could purchase, he would only be able to purchase about 300 shares. And you compare that with Warren Buffett and what he owns, he currently owns more than a quarter million shares. So I mean, if you took his net worth and said, okay, how many shares of Berkshire Hathaway can he own? Okay, it's over a quarter million. I mean, that's, that's 300 compared to over a quarter million shares. Obviously, that is a huge, huge difference. Now, if Berkshire Hathaway isn't quite, you know, um, something that you have a frame of reference around, or Berkshire Hathaway isn't that exciting as a reference point, let's think about that in terms of Lamborghinis. Now, certainly Warren Buffett is not the kind of person who's actually going out and, you know, getting a garage full of Lamborghinis. But if he wanted to, let's take a look at how many he could afford. Well, based on his net worth, if he wanted to go 100% into owning Lamborghinis, he would be able to have about... Uh, 358,000 Lamborghinis, okay? And again, you compare that with Jim Creamer, he's gonna be driving around about 400. So, I mean, again, huge, huge, huge difference. Thought that'd just be kind of like a fun thing to drop in there. And that is, by the way, with the Lamborghinis, assuming that your average purchase price uh, for that brand new Lamborghini is gonna be about 220,000. Now, let's take a look at some different quotes uh, from Jim Cramer and from Warren Buffett, because I think when we actually start to look at some of these quotes, that we can start to understand our styles a little bit differently. So first up, let's take a look at Jim Cramer. So Jim Cramer said, uh, we all are wrong so often, it amazes me that we have any conviction at all or for the direction of things to come, but we must. So he's saying, hey, you know, we're wrong a lot. How can we have any conviction over the things to come, over the short-term things to come, okay? And he says, hey, I don't really know. We're wrong a lot, but we must. Now that is a very, very different mindset to what Warren Buffett would say, because Warren Buffett would say, I don't know what's gonna come, and I don't have to in the short term. And I think that's a very, very different mindset. Again, you don't need to know what the earnings uh, you know, is going to be for the next quarter. You need to understand what the earnings are gonna be for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. And when you, again, take that time frame and kind of stretch it out a little longer, then again, I think that you can relax your anxiety a little bit more. So let's take a look at a quote from Warren Buffett, and I think that you'll kind of get a feel for the different perspective with this quote. So Warren Buffett says, I never attempt to make money on the stock market. I buy on the assumption that they close the market the next day and not reopen it for 10 years, okay? So he's saying, hey, immediately when I buy this, I'm gonna own it for 10 years, and I'm assuming I can't even sell this you know, for the next 10 years. And he's, he's fine with that, okay? He's saying, hey, I'm gonna own a part of this business that I believe in. And, you know, so when we look at that difference, you know, I think that's pretty stark, okay? One thinks short-term they have to know, the other one says short-term, close the market for 10 years and I'll sleep like a baby. Here's another good quote from Warren Buffett, you know, so again, Warren Buffett just really talks about saying, hey, continue to learn and to grow and compound your knowledge. So what does he say here? He said, read 500 pages like this every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up like compound interest. All of you can do it, but I guarantee not many of you will do it. Now again, that's a really interesting thing there. When you have somebody who is worth billions and billions of dollars, and they're telling you the formula to be able to be rich and successful, 
And instead of doing that, most people are running around looking for the shortcut or looking around looking to trade the election or trade the, the next earnings release. And he's saying, read, take your time, have a long-term perspective, and you're going to make a lot of money. Okay, so again, when somebody that rich is speaking to you and giving you wisdom like that, I feel like we should all be listening to it. Continuing to look at the differences between Jim Cramer and Warren Buffett. So Jim Cramer at the height of the financial crisis in 2008 went on national TV and the Today Show and sat down and said, hey, America, if you, you need money in the next five years, pull that money out of the stock market. Now's not the time to put that money to work. And that was right at the opportunity when you had uh, the chance to buy companies, some good companies at some really discounted prices, some prices that five years later, if you would have been able to buy those companies, you would have been much better off. Now, what do we contrast that with? Warren Buffett, when he talks in 2008, he comes back on and when he's talking, you know, he's in a much more assured and kind of confident state saying, hey, remember, I'm the guy who said, you know, you should buy when others are fearful. OK, that's the time to do it. You know, and when others are getting really, really greedy, hey, maybe that's an opportunity where you say that you're not as interested in buying stocks. OK, so, you know, that's what he's talking about. And he's always kind of really good about saying, hey, Take the long-term view on America. And again, when you're 90 years old and you're as old and kind of you, you've lived through what he's lived through, you can see that, hey, you know, we survived the Great Depression. We survived World War II and we survived, you know, all these different wars and periods of high inflation or low inflation. And over the long term, American businesses have gone on to be successful. OK, but again, I think that Jim Cramer, I think sometimes and this is part of the reason I wanted to make this video, because I think Jim Cramer, when things are going really, really wrong, I think that he can swing to be kind of almost really too pessimistic. And I think when things are going really, really right, I think he will kind of encourage people to say, hey, now's the time to buy. You know, so you think about it with current stocks like Zoom or Peloton and some of these shares that are zooming to all time highs. You know, he's going out there and telling people, hey, you know, you need to continue to buy these and that short term pressure is going to drive these stocks higher and higher and higher. And he's almost not even really concerned about the fundamentals. He's not concerned about, hey, what happens if the stock market shuts down for the next 10 years? Again, he's concerned about, hey, what's the profitability for the next week or month or day, whatever else that he's looking at. It's a shorter term perspective. Now, all that being said, again, so I still listen to both. I think that both can be useful for different contexts. So what I like with Jim Cramer is that, you know, I think that he does a good job at uncovering stocks that I might not have looked at otherwise. And I think he does also a good job of kind of like bringing in the CEOs to a show or different interviews that he's done. So he'll bring in, uh, you know, new investing ideas to you. And I think ultimately it's your responsibility to then take those ideas and, you know, if you you know think about it, you have the opportunity to kind of take Jim Cramer's investing ideas and think about which of those companies might represent good uh, investments for the long term and take a Jim Cramer investment idea and buffetize it, if you will. And again, think about, hey, if the market was going to close for the next 10 years, would I want to own that stock? So this is my walkthrough on the difference from Jim Cramer versus Warren Buffett. I think understanding this better can help you be a better investor. So thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and see you next time.